Welcome to Show Me Some Television, the segment where I talk television thanks to Show Me's service from Rogers. Uh, essentially, it's like Netflix, but it's from Rogers Telecommunications, and I'm getting it for free, so booyah! So yeah, I'm binge-watching television and talking to you about it. In this segment, we are going to be talking about Outlander Season 1, um, a show I had heard about and heard uh, some... You know, some some good things. Uh, it was it was, you know, water cooler talk. Not you know, in, at my particular workplace, but in general, um, it wasn't quite like Vikings or or um, uh, Game of Thrones. But you know, it was it was definitely out there. Um, it is based off of the works from. Uh, what was her name? Diana Gabaldon. I don't know how you pronounce her name. <laughs> um, but she does. She it's you know uh, very much. I guess what what has been deemed chick lit. Um, it is stuff geared towards um, more the female readers. Uh, involves a lot of romance, steamy sex, and such. And that has been translated definitely into the television show. Um, and as they say, sex sells. So I can see why people are into this. It's uh, part drama, uh, part uh, romance, uh, part action. And it even has a sort of a sci-fi element, though. That's kind of in the background. Um, what it is is essentially the story of uh, Claire Randall who is uh, from, uh, I guess it would be 1945, the end of the war, uh, and she's a combat nurse. And, um, you know, she gets together with her husband, who's been uh, an officer in, in the, the British Army. Uh, so they were a little estranged, but they get back together, and they're all lovey-dovey, and they go off on a little, I guess, a vacation of sorts to um, Scotland Highlands, and uh, they're both um, involved with history, uh, archaeology, research, and all that kind of such. Um, so they're researching um, the, these, this, this portion of history. So at one point they go up to a uh, set of standing stones, you know, it's like Stonehenge, but, you know, much smaller. Um, and uh, they're checking that out and uh, through some turn of events uh, Claire ends up transported back in time to the exact same period of time they were researching coincidence <laughs> um, and she has no way of really getting home she ends up being um, attacked by British soldiers and then carried off by uh, Highland Rogues, if you will. Um, now, Clara Randall is played by Katrina Balfe, or Balfe, 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 I don't know, um, <laughs> who you may recognize um, as of late. She was in Now You See Me, uh, Jasmine uh, Tresler was the character she played. Um, she was also lately in Money Monster. Um, but I recognized her from Escape Plan. She was uh, uh, Jessica Miller in that in that movie, um, and she's been in a few things. But now, really, Outlander is, is kind of what she's known for. Um, and uh, I, I really I, I I really dig what she does. She's from Ireland, so you know she's got, she's got the accent going and stuff like that. Um, her love interest in the in the the show is played by Sam Hewen. Um, he's a Scottish lad, uh, slightly younger than me, um, who I really didn't recognize at all. And when I looked him up online, um, he, I guess the only thing he was really known for, he's played a bunch of stuff, but the only thing he's really known for is a show called Doctors, where he played Scott Nielsen. I never heard of the show. So, he was new. Um, his... I have some problems with him and his character and the way he's portraying it. 
I think there are a few moments where it's unclear as to what they're trying to portray. Um, he could be saying one thing, but he's kind of acting in a different way, you know, and it's kind of contradictory. But uh, in general, I liked him in the show. Um, uh, another main character who you may know, uh, our main actor who you may know, is Graham McTavish, who also from Scotland. Um, he sort of plays, uh, I think he's the war master of the clan Mackenzie. And uh, he's been in quite a few things, but you may know him most as Dwalin from The Hobbit. He is one of the dwarfs, yes. Um, but he's been in a whole bunch of stuff and done a lot of voice work as well. Um, so he, he is a really, really good. In fact, there's a lot of really, really good actors and character actors in this show. Um, and I could go over them all, um, but uh, you know what? There's just so many of them. Um, that it's not really worth it. Um, essentially, what we get here is we get uh, Claire Randall um, ends up with these these Scottish people. So you get the the Laird or the Lord, um, who is uh, also at the the Graham McTavish character. His character is Dougal Mackenzie. Is his brother. So you get the two heads there, and then you get uh, Sam Hewen's character is Sam Fraser, who is the nephew, um, but he's also technically a Laird. He's a Laird of the Frasers, um, but he's in exile because, well, not exile, but he's on the run because he's a wanted man, um, and that leads to the British group um, who is actually led by the distant relative of Claire's husband and so her husband plays you know husband as well as his rel you know his own relative so um, he's got that going for him and he's kind of a sadistic uh, bastard of, of British um, like so clearly in this though there are a few instances which uh, differ from this the British are definitely portrayed as evil um, and the Scots for the most part, though, you know, with today's sensibilities, um, they, the, they're played as the, um, the good guys. Now, uh, this first season has a lot of stuff going for it. I don't want to really give too much away, um, but Claire is trying to get back to the Standing Stones, and so she can hopefully figure out how to get back to the future, um... The Mackenzie clan are just going about their days and trying to deal with this newcomer who, you know, is British. She's not Scottish, she's British. Um, so they don't know, is she a spy? Is she, uh, you know, where do her allegiances lie? Why does she know certain things? Why does she act certain ways? And, you know, for the most part, she's just trying to pawn it off as, oh, I'm just, I'm from a different place. Um... And so you get a lot of the stuff uh, that you would tend to see in a historical show um, of this nature, uh, superstitions, uh, fighting, lots of fighting, sword fights. The nice thing about this is during this time period, you've kind of got muskets and swords. So it's not just, you know, muskets a la Civil War area, era, and it's not just swords a la Medieval era, it's, it's that period of time where gunpowder uh, um, is clashing with, um, you know, the sword. And so you don't see a lot of that in, in television or film, so I was actually kind of happy to see that. Um, so yeah, there's lots of fighting, and where there's fighting, there is death and maiming and injuries, and Claire being that she was a, you know, field surgeon, brings that knowledge back to the past, and now she's a healer, um, so they're having to deal with a lot of different interesting injuries, and there is a lot of gore as a result. Um, so yeah, I was quite surprised to see the amount of brutality involved in, in this, um, because it really does play off the fact that when one instance you can have a lot of, you know, blood and guts, and the next instances you got a lot of, you know, romance and um, 
sex and steamy and, and a lot of that stuff. I mean, there's full-on nudity. Full-on nudity in this program. Um, so if that's what you're looking for, it's got it in spades. There are very few episodes where there isn't at least some skin shown. Um, and I think the same goes with uh, injuries of some sort. I mean, at the very least, you're going to get bruising. But you could have uh, gunshot wounds... Uh, knife wounds, sword wounds, um, disease, uh, you know, anything you can think of from in, in the past that could have happened to somebody may happen in an episode. Um, so yeah, it really is just this whole conglomeration of all these various characters and various families and various pawns in this sort of game of chess. Everybody's playing different uh, sides, political, um, moral... Um, a lot of that stuff going on. Oddly enough, um, Claire, though she's from the future, really isn't trying to stop, um, you know, that whole, if I go into the past and I change things, who knows what the future will be, maybe I won't exist. She doesn't even, that doesn't even come up. It's almost like it, it doesn't, <laughs> doesn't pop into her head. I don't even think it's mentioned. Uh, maybe early on in the season, I can't remember. Um, but yeah, it was very, very weird to see that she, like, she is mentioning, like, there are points in history and major events, and she's bringing up stuff that, you know, she either shouldn't know or, you know, may have heard somewhere, you know, or opinion can be taken as opinion. Um, and it, it could literally affect the entire future, her, you know, present, if you will. Um, so it's odd to see her just taking a nonchalant um, look at that. The other thing about it is weird is she is playing, she's from 1945, but she's playing a character of a very strong woman. I guess is how they would describe her in the, in the show. Um, a very opinionated woman. And it's odd because she's only from 1945. Um, we're not talking about like 1960s, 1970s. We're talking about 1945. And she grew up, I think she was born like early, before 1920, 1918 or something like that. So... Um, she's somebody who would have been, uh, I don't know, how would you put it? She would have been somebody who was aware of, of how women were treated, um, how they were looked at, how they were expected to be, um, and yet she goes back in the past and sort of acts more like somebody who I would think would be from like modern day age like very much so talking back to people who literally would kill her without us you know thinking about it like whatever women don't mean anything past you know in the past they yes you protect them but you know what it, it, you, you would beat them you beat women way back then like that was common and she has no problem um <laughs> You know, just mouthing off, talking back, uh, saying stuff, which I found really, really weird. Um, I wouldn't find it weird if she came from, like, say, 2006 or 2016 or something like that and went into the past. No, she's from 1945. Uh, yes, she will be a bit more opinionated, but I... It's... Yeah. I would have thought with her upbringing that she would have probably been more accustomed to figuring out and being able to deal with the past without any real, you know, problem, any, I don't know. It just seemed weird. Um, the other thing uh, about this, this show that I found odd was because it's in Scotland, they, they're speaking in Gaelic. And I don't have a problem with that. I love when a television show or a movie has the characters speak in their native tongue. Normally they have subtitles. 
there are no subtitles in this show. And, you know, sometimes, you know, somebody will be talking in Gaelic and somebody will be explaining to her because she doesn't speak Gaelic, thankfully, um, in English what the person is saying. That works. Other times, you're just kind of, as a viewer, trying, you know, expected to figure out what they're saying or it may be, you know, explained later on. But some of those scenes are so long where they're just talking in Gaelic, talking in Gaelic, talking in Gaelic, and you're like, I have no idea what they're talking about here. And like I said, it may be explained later on, or it may be deemed that you're supposed to figure out what they're saying from what's going on in the, the, the scene, but I found it odd that there was no subtitles. Like, honestly, it was... I mean, who speaks Gaelic? Who speaks Gaelic? I, I don't know anybody who speaks Gaelic. So, that... It's cool that they were speaking Gaelic. A little weird that they didn't give you any kind of translation. <laughs> but, whatever. It's It was cool. It was an interesting thing to see. Um, another thing that was odd in this is the amount of flashbacks. There's a lot of flashbacks because um, Claire's character being from the future... <laughs> I guess they're flash forwards, right? <laughs> she flashes back to her time in the future to, de you know, deduce things that are happening in the past to her and to those around her. At first, it made sense, right? Like, there's a lot of it, and it and it happens, and and that's how she's coming becoming a, you know, a customer, acclimated to her surroundings. Uh, but as the season went on, it started becoming less and less. Um, until eventually, you know, what it was, it was almost the thought of her, you know, husband who she was trying to get to at the beginning of the season, it, it, he become, it's almost like non-existent, like, despite there is a major scene where there is some interaction between the future and the past through, you know, magic, um, or sci-fi, whatever you want to call it, um, but... It's, it's, it's weird. Um, at first, I wasn't, I wasn't too disappointed with it, but later on, as it happened, it, because it became less and less prevalent in the season and the episodes, it almost started to seem out of place. Um, but at the same time, I was kind of glad that it was becoming less prevalent because you know what I was I was more interested in the past than I was in you know the dealings in the uh, future which we had already technically seen for the most part um, from the first you know episode when she was in the future um, so a lot of it isn't stuff from you know other other things that weren't shown this is stuff we'd already seen so uh, it was essentially it was just filler if you think about it but yeah outlander does a really good job of making you like the characters and wanting to continue forward with the episodes there it's not so much a cliffhanger as it is well there are a few cliffhangers there are a few episodes where, that leave you at the end and you're like oh i want to see what happens next but I think the story in general, you kind of want to see where it goes and you where you and where it leads to, um, and that's really really good. Of course, I like action, and there's plenty of action. I like gore, lots of gore. You know who doesn't like sex? Lots of sex, but it's a period piece as well, and I love that. Um, and it's a period I know very little, if almost nothing, about. Um, so I don't know how much of this is historically accurate, if they're using actual history or not, but it is kind of cool to see that, and hopefully it is somewhat historically accurate, because that would be even cooler. But, um, yeah, I definitely recommend uh, Outlander, at least as far as Season 1 goes. It is one of those things where I am looking forward to hopefully being able to check out another season. Um, hopefully, uh, you know, well, no, I'll probably have to buy it because um, I don't know how else I'll be able to see it. So, um, is it something I would uh, suggest buying? Yeah, you know what? I, I could see myself watching this two or three times through the f you know the full run um, once it uh, eventually finishes 
itself out. I do believe it is still uh, in production. Season 2 is either over or still going. I can't, I don't know. But I think, I think it's a continuing um, saga. So hopefully it gets to, to where it needs to go and is able to round out its story. As far as I know, there's a ton of books uh, that they can pull uh, material from. So unlike Game of Thrones, I do believe there's actually, you know, like way more books um, <laughs> that she's written. Uh, I don't know if they're all on this subject or not, but uh, yeah, comment down below if you know if you've read the books. Um, I have not. It is something that I kind of thought about, but there's so many books out there to read. I doubt I'll ever get to it, but it's on my list of possibilities, so who knows? I don't. I can't really comment, obviously, as a result, how the books and this, you know, compare, but there are probably other videos that are doing that. I'm just letting you know what I think. So, comment down below. Have you watched the series at all? Have you read the books? Let me know. Try and keep it spoiler-free. Till next video, take care. Have a good one.